My name's Dave DeBow, founder of MoneyPartnerFormula.com, and this show is built for everyday real estate investors who are actively doing deals and looking to scale using other people's money. So if you're an active real estate investor and you want to get featured on the show to talk about your own real estate and capital raising experiences, then just go to DaveInterviewsYou.com. Now let's get rolling with this episode and remember to subscribe for daily interview content. All right, guys, welcome to Property Profits Podcast. I'm your co-host, Bryce Kaminsky, filling in for Dave Dubow. And a lot of times, you know, if you're wondering, can I legalize that illegal basement suite? You know, that the, the, the trend of these secondary units and these other units where people are trying to get those mortgage helpers and things like that going, but they're not quite sure, like, should I take this deal because it might be more headache than it's worth? Uh, Alicia and Patrick here are going to fill us in on, maybe they don't want you cutting in on their territory, but they're doing it big time. How are you guys doing today? Good. good. Thanks. How are Thank you? you. Good, good. It's, uh, it's, it's going all right. The week is just starting. So I'm, I'm optimistic. So you'd mentioned before the call that you guys started as partners and then eventually, um, took it to the next level and got married, but you've been working on real estate together. How did that start? Um, so it was actually in the car home one day after we had visited her parents. Um, we were both working our nine to fives. And I think we spent about the last hour of, of that visit kind of venting about our jobs and how unhappy we were and how much more we wanted for each other and each of us wanted. And uh, it was actually Alicia's idea. I think she had a friend who had mentioned to her about real estate investing. And it was a very surface level conversation in the beginning. Alicia just said to me, you know, you're, you're really good at hands-on work. I've done a lot of labor my entire life with different labor jobs. And, and I'm very good at the office jobs because she's done mostly office her entire life. And she said, I think, I think that we could do real estate investing. And I think that we could partner up together and you with your background skills and me with my background sk skills, I think we could start this business together and, and succeed in it. And how many, uh, how many years ago was that when you decided to make the jump? So I think that was March, 2021. So it was right at the peak of when everything was shutting down. Uh, was it COVID starting? Yes, yeah. it, it was the start of COVID. Uh, it was actually, it would have been March, 2020, I believe. That was the start of yeah, COVID. Yeah, that was the oh. big starting yeah. point where yeah. they're like shutting everything down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Um, that was an interesting time to be in real estate. How did you guys navigate starting in a pandemic like that? So it was actually pretty intimidating it was our first purchase ever not to mention an investment so you know it was all about running the numbers and um we had i think 10 other offers on the house that we offered on so it was a little bit stressful making the decision within like two hours you know there's 10 other offers how are you going to make yours stand out um he was actually working up north which he still does and um so i went and saw it by myself he had never even seen it and i was just a little bit worried like should we do this does it make sense and we didn't really know how to run the numbers properly because our realtor didn't run a pro forma for us or anything like that so i kind of was just you know my mom helped me make a spreadsheet and it ended up being probably our best most profitable rental but uh it was pretty scary yeah, you don't know what you, you don't know until you get started. And yeah. sometimes you just have to pull the trigger. So congratulations on jumping in. And so since then, um, what's that journey look like for you guys? So I, th that one was, it had a basement suite in it already that just needed a lot of work done to it. It was run down. We found out very quickly. We learned very quickly, I guess, that the basement suite option was, was definitely one of the best routes to go for us anyways. That's what we had really liked about that one. And it's... Um, it, it ended up like, like Alicia had mentioned, like being very profitable for us. And so from there, we, we kind of realized like, cause in the beginning, there's a lot of confusion when you say real estate investing and it's like, mm -hmm. well, are you going to flip houses? Are you going to buy and hold? Are you, you know, potential, are you going to be JVing? Like, there's just so many different routes to go. And so very quickly we realized that the basement suite, suited houses were kind of like our niche. It was perfect for what we were doing. I do have a lot of labor experience. I can do a lot of hands-on stuff, but I wasn't able to do like high flip quality. Would, mm -hmm. And so it's like, I'm able to do a very good quality for our rentals and we provide a very good quality for our rentals. And that's kind of mm -hmm. where we landed. And that's what it's been ever since. So since then we've purchased three other ones. 
um, including one that we closed on on Friday that we're living in. Um, and so we've been house hacking most of them. Like the first one, we actually lived in it through the renovation. Um, we moved from one suite to the next one, then on to the next property. And um, like I said, all of them have suites in them. So we just, we've lived in three of the four now. And do you find that strategy um, beneficial or what's what's the bonus for people who haven't done that or maybe thinking about it? Um, so you you don't have the same carrying costs when you live in it. You're going to be, you know, you have to pay for yourself to live somewhere anyway. So you're really uh, checking two points there. And I think also just being on the property and renovating, um, it makes for a really long day. Like I mentioned, both of us work our full-time job still. So it was like, I'd finish my job at five and we'd be going until midnight he was working on his days off from the rigs mm -hmm. um working however many hours so they're long days but it's really easy because you don't have to commute to another location yeah you're like yeah. living in it it's like uh you're lying there in bed you're like oh, i really should you know finish that thing and it's like <laughs> fine i'll get out of bed and go and fin yeah. finish that thing so what do you guys like the most out of legalizing these basement suites um so maybe maybe like in terms of um adding a suite from scratch versus legalizing it it's a lot easier and less expensive to legalize it in calgary um i don't know if you want to go over some of the differences between adding um yeah so currently the city of calgary they run a program where they're trying to get as many illegal suite basement suites in the city legalized mostly for safety reasons and mm -hmm. um so they they have this amnesty period right now where they are allowing people to not go through as rigorous um, requirements in order to legalize it. So for instance, right now, if you have an illegal suite, you're trying to legalize, you don't need a second furnace. Um, whereas if you were building it from scratch, you would need a second furnace or a separate heating source for that basement suite. That's one of the, that's one of the bigger ones and probably the more expensive ones that ends up like costing a lot more if, when you're legalizing from scratch. Yeah, they'll probably yeah. want like an HRV and stuff like that. And exactly, you probably yeah. can get some grandfathering, you know, some leeway in, in putting those things together. So, um, you know, it's always great to talk about the nice part, but what what's, isn't so great about it? So the legalization process, you mean? Yeah, like the, the niche that you're in, because, you know, there's it's interesting you say like that you jumped into the niche, but when you start real estate investing, people try to put you in a box. They're like, oh, are you a flipper? Or are you a buy and hold person but when you look at the niche that you're in what maybe isn't so great about what it is that you guys are doing if you had to if you had to narrow, narrow it down um it, specifically with the legalization process the city of calgary is, is sometimes difficult to deal with as i'm sure a lot of municipalities can be um th there's a lot of inconsistency and in like uh, depending on which inspector you get depending on you know, sometimes I even like to think it's the time of day when they come by. Sometimes it's, yeah. it seems like, it seems like for each property, they've, they've made us do different things like, Oh, you don't, didn't, don't have this. We're not going to approve you yet. Right. So that, that the biggest challenge has definitely kind of been going through their process. And not only that, they're always updating it too. They're always mm -hmm. adding in more, more safety, which nothing against that, that, that makes sense. We want to provide safe livable units for people. Um, but they're always adding to it. So you always have to be on top of it and are always like, we're always engaged in whether it's Facebook groups or fellow investors speaking with them on like, oh, you legalized one recently. What were some of the quirks that they made you do is has anything yeah. changed? Have they added anything to the process? So right? for example, last year you were allowed to have sprinkler systems in the mechanical room. And then as of January, they changed it to drywall. It's a lot more expensive to drywall a mechanical room than it is to add a little sprinkler system. So there's things like that that they just continuously add. Yeah. Yeah. yeah chase, chasing the tail of the permit <laughs> um, permit thing. I remember once I was supposed to meet someone at one of the properties for a permit and it was like really cold and it gets cold uh, here in Winnipeg. And I was like five minutes late. And then that inspection did not <laughs> go so great because they were waiting <laughs> yeah. on the porch for maybe three or five minutes, but they even sent down like that head inspector to look at this thing. So they threw the book <laughs> at us. Um, so yeah, pro tip, don't let your inspectors wait, be on time. So what do you think, what do you guys think your, your, you know, the secret sauces for, for what you're able to accomplish? Like what comes easily, 
to you guys that maybe other people find difficult to do? Um, well, I think, I think there's two things. One of them is, uh, his hands-on experience and his ability to just pick something up and learn how to tile, learn how to do some plumbing, whatever it is. Um, that's been very helpful and it's not something that we can utilize forever, nor do we want to, but it's great to know how to do those things. Because if some, if one of our tenants calls us and needs a quick fix, we don't have to spend, you know, $500 for the call out or whatever it is. So the, I'd say there's that. And also, um, I think our people skills and our ability to manage our tenants and pick our tenants, we have picked fantastic ones in every unit and, we have the best relationships with them. And while we're self-managing, it's really important that we don't have to, you know, deal with a bunch of drama, a bunch of people um, doing things that we need to evict them. Not to say that that's never going to happen. We're yeah. going to be realistic about it. It's it's going to, it's something that Knock we're going to face. Like, yeah, <laughs> for sure. But I think, I think our relationships and our ability to be very respectful to our tenants and the people that we work with in other capacities is something that we really pride ourselves in. Yeah. So things, things are going, you know, relatively, relatively well, you guys have hit your mark, but, um, you know, we were talking before the call, like, what, what does the future now look like from where you want to go now? Because it's, I don't think we've mentioned it, but you guys have self-financed, right? You've self-financed all the things with refis and yes. your yes. own capital. Um, and like, like all good investors, you can get a good start on that and it's great. But at some point, your dreams outpace your capital. Um, how you guys plan to overcome that obstacle? So that that's that's definitely our next challenge in our business is we we want to start using OPM other other people's money and we want to start JVing with people um, to try and like you, like you said like we we have very ambitious goals that we are constantly reevaluating. And part of our goals is to, we had mentioned prior to the call, move into multifamily and also start to do more deals per year. Because right now we we have currently been on a pace of about one to two deals a year. Mm -hmm. And we want to up, we want to up those numbers. And we know that the only way we're going to be able to do that is starting to go external. If, from, from everything we've done so far has been mostly internal in terms of all of our costs and all the money. And we know we're going to have to start moving external now. And we feel very confident in, in the skills that we've developed through self-managing and doing our own rentals and those sorts of things. So we feel very confident in, you know, taking on someone else's money and, you know, presenting them with the numbers, telling them if it's a good project or not, all those sorts of things. So I, I feel like we're in a really good place to move into that now that we've done th these four deals ourselves. Yeah, you've kind of proved, you've definitely proved the concept and you've got the papers and the numbers to show it. Um, yeah. Why not just keep doing what you're doing now instead of instead of expanding like at the same pace? You know, why not just keep doing that? Um, I think, you know, this is kind of the same reason everyone gets into real estate or most people is, you know, leaving yeah. our, our nine to five jobs is, uh, as we mentioned, he works away. He's away, uh, you know, two weeks at once back for a week. It's, it's a lot of time away and it would be really nice to have him in the city. And, and, you know, I don't want to be slaving at my nine to five forever. It's, yeah. it's not because we don't want to work hard, but we want to be working hard for a purpose that's for us and building our life. So that's the reason we want to scale. Yeah. That that's usually the under the underlying mm -hmm. reason is like people are like, I guess the word is because people are sometimes, Oh, you want to retire from your nine to five. It's like, well, no, we want to become gainfully unemployed. Yes. So, yes. um, have you started reaching out? When do you guys plan to start that campaign to allow other people to participate in your in your profit? Well, like we we actually have we've networked pretty extensively and we have talked to many people already. Unfortunately, we haven't been able to we haven't had enough time. We've been very focused on on our own kind of like what we've been doing right now. Like our wedding planning and, and, and that's we got married yeah. this summer yeah. and exactly yeah. right. And so like we have already started to reach out to people and and like we are ready to step into that next step like right now. Okay. And, and what have you found? Uh, you know, a lot of people are in the same place listening at home. What have you found to be most effective as far as uh, approaching your prospects so far? 
Um, like you might have gotten some, you might have gotten some maybes and things like that. I mean, it you really do have to focus on capital, but there, there's, there is probably some positive in there. You must have, yes, had some maybes. They're probably well, waiting so for a deal, right? So, um, up until this point, we haven't explicitly asked for money nor presented a project. It's been more of a putting feelers out there and, you know, going to a ton of events, building great relationships through Instagram or in person. So um, we haven't really tackled the presenting an offer. And, and that's something that we're going to be learning a little bit more about. But I think having those relationships and building that level of respect is really important because mm -hmm. you're investing in the person more than you are the deal. So that's that's been something that I feel confident that we've developed and now we can just kind of build off of that. The networking. Yeah, yeah. definitely the networking. That That's what's been like the most, like made the biggest difference and impact is meeting new people, meeting like-minded people and having these discussions with people who are also interested and at this same, you know, kind of spot where they're ready to JV as well. So are you guys yeah. more of a find the deal first and get the money or are you more of a call the bank? So like so far you've been self-funded. Do you guys call the bank first? Or do you find the deal first or do you get the money first or the deal first? How does that work for you guys? Up until this point, we've always got pre-approved just so we're not looking for things that we know we can't afford. So we get a general pre-approval and then we know what we can be looking for and um, and then we find the deal. Um, but I think I think it's interchangeable, though, at the same time, because although maybe there has been periods where we weren't actively looking, we are always kind of passively looking at the same time. And I think that's I think that's important, like especially in this business and in this market here in Calgary, especially is like we have to you have to be constantly watching and seeing what's going on. Right. Because mm -hmm. event like especially with our how our prices have uh, like you know gone up here over the last couple of years we need to be prepared and be like kind of constantly running the numbers to does this make sense still, even if we aren't necessarily pre-approved or have the money ready to go right now, like what are we, we need to be able to anticipate where it's going to be when we, and, and I think that helps make you prepared for when something does come because there's, there's been times where we didn't think we were going to get something we were pre-approved, but we had kind of put it on the back burner and we were focused on other aspects and then all of a sudden a property came up and it was the perfect property. And out of nowhere, we had to completely 180 and like, we're buying this property right now and we're ready to go. And it was partially because we were keeping just an ear to the ground on, on the market and what was going on. And we keep our, we have like a Google drive and we constantly keep it updated with our most recent information for our mortgage broker and that sort of thing. So we're not left scrambling. If something does come up, we're always prepared to act. Yeah. Super organized. Right. Yeah. 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 With the Google drive, like I can access her file. We have it set up. So that's if she's at work or if she is unable to answer an email, it's like I can access documents related to her and vice versa. Right. Very quickly. Yeah. The power, the power team, right. You get it done. <laughs> so, um, you know, when people go down into a niche like that, I always like to ask the question, like, what's a myth that has kind of been busted over, over your career so far where you thought going in, it was going to be like this. And it turns out it's actually like that. It's a tricky mm. question. I always that get is that tricky is a tricky question. question. But it, this is the this is the nuts and bolts. Like, what did you think? What what kind of thing did you think? Oh, it's gonna be like that, and it turns out it wasn't. Um, well, the thing that comes to mind initially, I think, is that it's passive. Um, and it's really not <laughs> at all. And I think if you go into it thinking that it can just be totally passive right from the beginning without investing any money, um, it's it's not going to be. So, and I think just from the outside perspective for someone who's not into real estate, um, they think that it's just easy and, and um, they think that we got everything handed to us and that it's not hard work. So I, I don't know, that's the one that comes to mind for me. <laughs> Yeah, I, yeah, I would agree with that. And I would also add like the um the management of it all and the <clears throat> the amount of time it takes even to complete a project. Like I think in our initial on the very first property, I had it taking two months to do all the renovations and it was four months, right? And it was like the amount of time and and like energy required to do that, especially when you're hands-on, like we are in the beginning doing it yourself. Yeah, definitely. So if people want to get a hold of you guys, they want to 
uh, talk about your next deal, possibly, you know, get invested with your par partner with you guys? How do they find you? Where do they reach out to? Um, so right now we do most of our networking through our Instagram account, which is heels and hammer underscore. And that's uh, where we document our renovations and just talk about, you know, what we're doing, what our plan is. And eventually we'll be doing a better job with a website, but Instagram is our go-to right now. Yeah. I mean, you gotta, you gotta send them to where you are and the, the pictures are going to be huge. People can check it out. So yeah, I, I really appreciate you guys, uh, you know, zooming in on the meeting here and, uh, I'm sure people are going to enjoy the story. So thanks for showing for the show, guys. Perfect. Thank you for having us. Thank you. No problem. And until next time, guys, we'll see you on the next episode. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed that episode. And as always, if you want to listen to more daily interview content, make sure you subscribe. And if you're an active real estate investor and you're doing deals and you'd like to get featured on this show, then just head over to DaveInterviewsYou.com. Now at moneypartnerformula.com, we help real estate investors to create a process for predictably getting capital so they can do more deals without relying on hard money lenders or the banks. We do this by building them a private capital marketing system. Now, if you want help turning yourself into a big money capital attraction machine, then book a call with our team to see how we can help. Just visit moneypartnerformula.com to find out more. All right, take care and we'll see you on the next interview.